Everyone knows all dinosaurs were scaly, right? The mighty dinosaurs, the terrible lizards, the masters of the planet for the entirety of the Mesozoic era, right? They ambled after one another, teared each other limb from limb, sloshed through swamps to eat their soft water plants, and barreled through the environment with scaly lizard and crocodile skin. Everyone knows this and nothing ever controversial has ever been brought up by the fossil record. Well, that was a general thought about the dinosaurs for a while, and quite a while ago. Though this may be a myth, it is no longer one most people think. It may have been a much more common myth in the 1980s and 90s, and even I remember some vestiges of it when I was growing up in the 2000s, but it's the 2020s, and thanks to the internet, we all have as much access to the brand new cutting edge of paleontology as the top paleontologists do. That being said, dinosaurs were not all big, scary, scaly monsters. No, reality is often far more complex and nuanced than we might wish it was. As it happens, flesh does not stick around, it decays when things die. This means the majority of the time, the only thing left over from a body when it dies is its bones. Bones can stay around so long after the rest of the body decays that they can become buried by sediments, your sands, your gravels, your silts. Turns out, if the bones remain buried long enough, water that has dissolved minerals will seep through the sediment and into the holes that the bones have. Over time, these minerals fill in the holes in the bones and eventually the bone becomes mineral and can then survive for millions of years. Flesh, skin, and accoutrements like feathers or fur cannot do this. Well, they can't do this in the same way. Sometimes conditions are so perfect that the impressions that the hair or skin or feathers made in the sediment around the body remains untouched by time. Sometimes the organic substances that made the hair or skin or feathers becomes congealed into a mineralized sludge that leaves a stain with the rest of the skeleton. Through these weird processes, we can directly observe the squishy bits that once covered the bones of ancient things. Turns out that skin and scales and bony armor are easier to fossilize than fur and feathers, so some of the first dinosaur fossils to show these squishy outer bits were those that had scales and scoots and armor. This gave the false impression that dinosaurs were all big scaly beasts. So it was also assumed the rest of the dinosaurs that did not have skin preserved must have also been scaly, like those few exceptions. Plus, dinosaurs were related to crocodiles and are reptiles, so paleontologists of the past were more comfortable covering their dinosaurs with scaly skin. Yes, birds were connected to dinosaurs from the very start, but this idea would fall by the wayside a bit, and truly feathered, non-avian dinosaur fossils would not be found until the latest 1990s and early 2000s. So yeah, plenty of non-avian dinosaurs were scaly, and plenty were covered in varying levels and varying complexities of feathers. The early 1990s saw the discovery of spectacularly preserved bird fossils in several early Cretaceous geological formations in the northeastern Chinese province of Liaoning. In 1996, Chinese paleontologists described Sinoceropteryx as a new genus of bird from the Yixian formation, but this animal was quickly recognized as a more basal theropod dinosaur closely related to Compsognathus. Surprisingly, its body was covered by long filamentous structures. These were dubbed protofeathers and considered homologous with the more advanced feathers of birds, although some scientists disagreed with this assessment. Chinese and North American scientists described Caudipteryx and Protarchaeopteryx soon after. Based on skeletal features, these animals were non-avian dinosaurs, but their remains bore fully formed feathers closely resembling those of birds. Archaeoraptor, described without peer review in a 1999 issue of National Geographic, turned out to be a smuggled forgery, but legitimate remains continued to pour out of the Yishin, both legally and illegally. 
feathers or protofeathers have been found on a wide variety of theropods in the Ischian, and the discoveries of extremely bird-like non-avian dinosaurs, as well as non-avian dinosaur-like primitive birds, have almost entirely closed the morphological gap between non-avian theropods and birds. For those scale lovers out there, there are plenty known with direct evidence of a lack of feathers. We have Carnotaurus, whose holotype specimen preserved whole swaths of skin impressions, showing bumpy, leopard gecko-like skin. There are patches of scaly skin from Diplodocus, Triceratops, and Tyrannosaurus. Entire dinosaur mummies have been found of Edmontosaurus, Corthosaurus, and Brachylophosaurus. The skin and armor, or just the armor where it was when the animal died, have been found for a large number of armored dinosaurs, particularly the ankylosaurs, but also some stegosaurs. Boreola pelta is the best example with the entirety of the armor from the top of the animal preserved, with skin too. This specimen's soft tissues were so well preserved that the pigment-carrying cells of the skin were also preserved and provided an estimated color scheme of rusty reddish browns. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.